Okay, welcome to our first video vision farming vlog. My name is Tommy Heffernan, I'm a vet and part of the team. And today we're going to talk about how we're tackling cryptosporidium on one of our two vision farming dairy farms. Um, a, a slight disclaimer, and I suppose for a long time, um, a lot of the content that I create professionally has to be very complete and broad. This is very specific about what, how we're approaching um, tackling cryptosporidium on one of our farms. It's been a challenge last year. So this is uh, specific information around what we're doing. There's other options, of course, um, but I'll be explaining out uh, in general terms what we are doing. Just very quickly, when we talk about Cascar, it's important to remember some fundamentals that are key uh, that can be applied to any system, because it's not just cryptosporidium that causes Cascar issues. The number one calf health challenge. Um, so when we're talking about any infectious disease in calves, um, we're always trying to balance two things. Immunity on one side, we're trying to boost immunity or maximize immunity, and we're going to try and bring down infection pressure on the other side. Infection pressure is the amount of bugs or pathogens that an animal is exposed to. Different pathogens will have different effects, but ultimately that's what we're doing, balancing immunity and infection pressure. And with Cascar, just to give people an idea of what's happening at end, we come up to calving time, and if we look at infection pressure, in particular with any of the, 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 the viruses that cause scour, or bacteria, or crypto, or coccidiosis, we have a source for them usually to start out with, and it's most commonly the cows are the source for cryptosporidium. Um, because of the, the type of bug that it is, it's devised for up to 12 months in the environment, so the housing and existing calf sheds or calving pins can be a source of it, and some people talk about water as well, but the cows and the houses are the main source. So the small levels of these parasites, crypto or maybe even viruses, uh, in cows or in the environment. And what happens is you have this massive multiplying effect and this is how infection pressure, infection pressure builds. And this is why we see calf scour, particularly in the middle and the later sections of the season, is that you know a calf can ingest a hundred of these microscopic organisms and produce a billion. So what happens is calves multiply that infection pressure up to a point where even with good immunity, uh, it can be overwhelmed. So remember, immunity and infection pressure. And um, what we can see on the other side is if immunity is compromised, that we can see infection issues earlier, even with smaller amounts of, of infection. So we're always thinking about that. We have a training series on the Vision Farming platform on our checklist for calf health, taking you right through a video series training, and you can check out that, but it's fundamentally trying to understand this, applying it right throughout all, all aspects of calf health. So on our farms, it's very important to set out where we are. You know, and this has been fantastic for me. You know, I know what we should be doing, the perfect scenario. But on our farms, we have certain challenges. So we've got to figure out what we can do this year. So we have a five-year program. What can we do? What will we do? And um, we've got to make improvements from what's happened last year. Um, and our motto at Vision Farming, and it's very applicable to farming, is progress over perfection. You know, we, we often, you solve one bottleneck or restriction in a system, something else will might appear. So what can we do on farm? We have a huge amount of weaknesses on this farm, challenges um, that are there. Stocking rates, uh, our sheds, the way sheds are designed, we have small sheds, um, we have cows challenged around cubicles, uh, the flow of the yard from the system from where the milking power is, getting colostrum to the calf shed. So we have huge challenges on that. We've made a certain amount of adaptions this year. The lads have worked extremely hard on this farm to, to do that, but that has all taken time to alleviate those bottlenecks and improve animal space, stocking densities, and bedding, extra bedding. That all takes time, so time has been taken away. So we, that time has been taken away has going to, is going to be a challenge if anything goes wrong. Uh, you know, it would be great to build new sheds in the farm the first year and do all these sort of things. We can't. We've got to work with our existing structures and be as, uh, as good as we can with them. And I'll talk, you'll, as, as Vision Farming goes on, we'll talk more about what we're doing on farm. Um, so we've got to look at high priority tasks that we can really focus in on. And like last year, um, we, again, record keeping wasn't maybe where it should be. We worked out about seven, maybe even 8% calf mortality, which is way too high. We're also tracking antibiotic usage for last year in the farm, and it's way too high in calves. So they're cr critically important areas, weaknesses that we need to work on. So if we take that, what are we doing on the farm? This is very specific as how we're tackling this challenge. And I've broken it up into three things. Now, it looks like there's a lot of writing, but over a period of time and a step-by-step -step process, this uh, should improve things, and it's progress we're looking for. So I'm looking at immunity. I'm looking at how we can reduce down infection pressure and in our routines that we need to keep an eye on. So 
On our timeline here, just like up here, we've cabin time. So let's focus on what we're going to do from an immunity perspective, right? maximize immunity. So the cows have been vaccinated with rollback corona uh, a couple of weeks ago, uh, two weeks ago now, um, looking to boost the immunity of colostrum. So um, a lot of times with cryptosporidium, there are secondary agents like rotavirus, coronavirus, and E. coli causing challenges. So we're vaccinating the cows to stimulate the immunity in this all-important colostrum. Um, we're looking at the cows themselves, and I said we have huge challenges around space, and we have 60 heifers calving in, and all this, we've got to move cows around, so we're prioritizing space and minimizing stress down for cows uh, coming up to calving time. So we're looking at how, how we transition. That's a whole different section that I'll be covering in the next video blog around cow management. We're looking at feeding cows uh, to boost colostrum immunity. So the cow's rumen has to adapt, um, she, especially when she goes to milk, but she, you know, from an energy perspective and a protein perspective, but also we're brewing colostrum the other 14 to 7 days before calving. Energy and protein are critical. So we're feeding our close-up cows a soybean meal and, and raw oats mixture to help improve colostrum quality. So that's what we're doing, uh, that we're doing everything we can to make sure that the colostrum that the heifers and cows produce in the farm is of the highest quality. We're going to measure the first 10 colostrum samples, see where we're at, that'll give us an idea about how well we're doing here, and ensuring that we get the best colostrum we can. Then what we do with colostrum, this is the building block for calf health, not just calf scouring, it's the building block for calf performance. What we do then is we need to look at how quickly we get it in, uh, and the quantities we get it in, aiming for three litres of colostrum at a minimum on the farm, um, and I'll talk about how we're going to work with colostrum from infection pressure as well. So we're really focused in on colostrum on farm. So we also have a product called Colostrum Gold there, which is just basically freeze-dried colostrum. And we'll be using that replacer, particularly when we have heifers calving in first, if there's any issues around quality that we just don't want to compromise, we'll use that until we have a store of our own high-quality maternal colostrum. When we look at immunity then after that, that's the key thing when it comes to colostrum. And I'll talk a little bit about, maybe in a second, about colostrum at, at a gut level as well. But the next thing we need to do is we need to try and keep things as easy and as consistent as possible when we're, we have lots of calves coming. So we're trying to look at our sheds now from a perspective of the environment the calves are in, uh, avoiding cold calves, having a dry lie, feeding calves, and this is something I've experienced, again back to the disclaimer, this is me applying my principles here, feeding calves um, more milk certainly helps when we're dealing with cryptosporidium or any challenge, because you're feeding that calf more, they're growing more, their immune system is stronger, their gut is healthier. We're feeding whole milk, and what we're, the only thing we're going to be doing post-calving is actually using o an oral probiotic liquid in the milk for the first seven to 10 days, and then periodically using it over the calving period after that. Um, and I'll talk about that. So they're, they're the key things we're doing for immunity. And then we're looking at consistent routines around everything there. So I just want to take you to the gut for a minute. I want to take you to the gut to understand what's happening from a couple of perspectives. When we talk about colostrum, it's got fat and protein for the calf. It's got these immunoglobulins that farmers have heard so often that you know, the calf is born immunonaive. It needs that immunity from the mother's milk. But colostrum also plays, a, and these are the gut cells, plays a key role is all these other factors in it that help this gut develop because um, it's all about immunity at gut level when we look at, uh, with, with parasites. You know, really, really important. So colostrum plays a key function there in helping the young gut develop, in helping the immune system in the, in the local level, at cell level, to prevent not just your cryptosporidium parasites invading, but your E. coli's and your viruses. The other thing we're doing, and I said there, is probiotics. And I'll, I'll talk a little bit more about the probiotics we use as our season progresses. We're very lucky to come across a very unique product. So what we're doing is we're actually putting in good bacteria from the world going to colostrum in the first week of milk. And what we're doing is we're improving gut health. An area I'm very interested in, and I've done a lot of research in, around improving gut health, the microbiome. So that probiotic is going in there. So we're really focusing on a gut health level at immunity. So we're doing everything we can with the cows, colostrum, and then at a gut level, and then maybe at a top level, uh, reducing stress down in calves. So that's our immunity piece. The next thing we can do and focus on a farm, and this is a challenge for us, is infection pressure. 
From the layout of the farm, it's difficult. We've lots of different, uh, we've, we've stocking rain issues and, and stocking incidents of challenge. So we've open sheds where we put in a calving shed and a straw bed shed, uh, calf pens themselves. Uh, I think last year they were challenged around space. So we've uh, two sheds up the road about half a mile away where we'll have an overflow for calves and we're gonna manage them with the same principles as well. That creates extra labor for us, but it's what we have to do to try and reduce down the challenges that are there. So we're going to focus particularly because we've had cryptosporidium issues on disinfecting those pens and calf pens with a disinfectant that's going to kill the oocysts, these cryptosporidium oocysts in the house. And that's we're using a 3% hydrogen peroxide solution and we're cleaning out the sheds first, we're steam cleaning and then hydrogen peroxide. So that's what we're doing in preparation. So a lot of the, this work here is front loaded uh, and it's been happening on the farm at the moment. So we're trying to have things as clean as we possibly can that the cows and the calves are calving down in the environment with low infection pressure. Then a really important one, and I see this is a big bottleneck on a lot of farms, is colostrum itself. Okay? we doing everything we can to, from a, uh, an immunity perspective to ensure that colostrum quality is high. What can we do to make sure that the first feed of colostrum that goes into the calf hasn't bacteria in it, hasn't these pathogens in it, because that young immune gut is, um, is, is it like a sponge, it'll absorb colostrum, but it'll also absorb bacteria. So we really gotta focus on colostrum hygiene on the farm. So we, we know how we harvest colostrum, we have a challenge, our milk powder is here, our calf pins are, are a good bit away. How we harvest colostrum, how regularly we clean out our bucket for colostrum, how regularly we clean out any buckets we use, so we have a routine protocol on that. We're really focusing on clean colostrum going in on farm. Then we're looking at the calf pens when the calves go out. And you'll hear me talk a little bit about this again in the future. Is we're, 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 we're trying a very unique solution here. Is we're, we're, we're hitting the calves with probiotics in their gut, but we're also using microbes um, in the environment to control uh, pathogen levels. So what we're doing is we're doing our normal disinfecting and preparation, but as the season goes on, we're treating the, back, the environment, fogging the environment with good bacteria. And it's always a competition between good and bad, be it in the gut or the environment. So uh, that would be a really interesting one to watch. Uh, we're going to keep feeding equipment clean, keep pet calves in the same pens, we're moving them together, um, and we're going to have fairly consistent routines uh, around cleaning that we're hoping to do. This sounds, again, even though we have a plan for the farm, this sounds great, but it's, it's difficult to, to really get action on, and we'll have to see how it goes as, we, as, as calving starts. Um, and we'll, you know, there'll be things that will work. We're trying to be as prepared as we can. We're trying to have everyone as trained and as comfortable with the routines we're on, making cleaning uh, calf equipment easy with an IBC container and our disinfectant close by it. It's just an easy process. Um, and we're working out that from a management and a flow um, of what we can do. That's really important. So we're going to refocus protocols throughout the season because like that, it's all, everyone's full of energy for the first three or four weeks, but it gets busier time and people are tired and that's where the risk of infection pressure is. So it's that constant focus uh, on the infection pressure, the consistent immunity. And then we've got routines. We've got, a, as I said, we've got our standard operating procedures. What can we do? There was loads of things I wanted the lads to do, but they said, look, this is what we can do, and, and what are the results we want? So we've got a uh, higher than we like mortality rate from last year. We want to dramatically reduce that down. We want to improve calf performance. We want to dramatically reduce our antibiotic usage. From an immunity perspective as well, here, just from a vaccination perspective, one thing I haven't mentioned is we're going to vaccinate intranasally with a, an RSV vaccine and um, all our calves as well. So we're then going to review how this is going, this is the preventative piece, but calves do get sick, we need to identify them early. Uh, what treatments are we using? We have set, written out our treatments, um, particularly with calf scour, we're using uh, hydropower advanced fluids uh, early, uh, often, and we're going to review how that's been done. Um, the idea would be to isolate calves out of calf scour to remove that source of infection. We've got to see how that's going. We've set up a hospital pen. Um, we have diagnostic kits on the farm where we can test any calf scar straight away and actually see, okay, is it rota, is it viral, is it bacteria, is it crypto, is it none of the above? Is it later in the season? Do the samples need to be sent further? So we've got to watch these plans and review them. But, and I know that will seem like a lot, but we've been working here over that period of time on this. This is what we're doing now. Um, it looks lovely on a whiteboard. It's about consistently applying those routines in the real world, focusing on that key area that's always thinking about immunity, 
reducing down infection pressure and reviewing our routines and trying to make it as easy as possible so we can and will do it. We know what we should be doing and we'll improve next year. Um, I'm going to talk about in the next blog the, uh, what we're doing around cow health and transition management there because uh, obviously if there's a challenge with calves here in space, it's even bigger for our cows. Um, if you want more information on any of the products I've mentioned or certainly the training, the online calf health training course, um, all this sort of stuff is covered in much more detail in the video tra training series on visionfarming.com. Uh, That's it for now. Happy safe farming, everybody.